Hey guys, this is Draymond here. I thought I'd just chuck together a quick uh, video on some of the stuff I've learned for the uh, Dawn of War 3 World Builder. Um, start off by mentioning that there's a uh, pretty massive bug at the moment where you can create a map, save it, export it, play it, no worries. But if you come back and save it again, export it again, like you've edited it, at that point the game engine stops recognizing that map and it just won't show up. Um, I know I've seen it uh, in the comments somewhere on the community forums. Um, so yeah, when, when you create a map just be aware, at least for the moment, you've kind of got one shot to get it right uh, until they release a bug fix for it. So. If you want to, you can still create your maps, um, just play around with maps a few times, create plenty of test maps, get familiar with what works, what doesn't work, and at least that way you've got a pretty good chance of throwing together a map that you've put time into that is correct for starters and will show up in the game, because if, uh, if you put something in and it's not right and the game doesn't like it, when you go back to edit it and fix it, it's just not going to show up anyway because of the bug. There's the um, the uh, the guide um, modding.donawar.com. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to go off of. Uh, anything beyond that, um, aside from basic controls, I haven't really been able to figure out. And uh, that bug um, most certainly doesn't help seeing as you've kind of got one shot and then you've got to start all over again. But anyway, um, I'll jump into it and show you kind of what I've figured out so far uh, to bring me up to this point here with this map. To start off with, uh, to get the world builder up, um, go to your Steam library, Steam apps, common, where Dawn of War 3 is installed, and it should just be down the bottom. Um, it's probably a good idea to tell it to run as uh, administrator. Um, I'm not entirely certain, but I pretty much do that with uh, most things anyway. I'm just going to go File, New, Multiplayer Map. I'm going to put it in its own folder. Call this one Test 7 1v1. So with terrain size and playable area it kind of gives a buffer around the outside where you can have map detail but the player won't be able to do anything in that area. First thing I do, I don't rely on the grid that you get from the tiles. So I go into tile up the top, select the layer that it's on and change it to a different texture, got to hit a sign. You can hold Alt to rotate the camera. Then I use the overlay grid 32. Now we'll start placing objects. So object placement button, EBS, gameplay, you're going to need entry point, share, um, starting position, shared territory, and starting territory team. So you left click on it. If it won't left click, just click on something else and come back to it. Use snap to grid. If you go to four, it uh, should line up on the intersections of the grid and kind of in between um, in a fairly neat way. I'm going to go one for player one, one for player two, then starting position shared territory. This is the, the um, main base. Right clicking to place.
and then this uh, starting territory team is kind of where uh, what it uses to figure out the divides in the map. I'll come back to that later. Next thing the base needs is the we want the turret, the external generator and the power core. So we'll go power core first. I'm going to put that on there, on there. Okay, now you'll see I've missed with this one here. So wait till you get that little grid come up and left click on it. And then this uh, bottom tile here, you can click and drag with that one. If you grab these ones, it'll just move along that axis. If I was to say turn snapped grid up, it will force it to go uh, onto well, should be going onto the corners. It's probably due to the um, map size divvying up the map differently. But if you go halfway, that should give you, there we go, corners and middle, 16. Okay, now you can rotate. Um, if you hold, I think it's shift and drag that'll give you rotation and I assume snap to angle uh, 45 let's see what that does let's try again So if I bring it to about there, let's see if it snaps. Yes, it does. It's a bit touchy by the looks as to whereabouts you have to click to get it to rotate sometimes. I don't know, it's still doing weird things. I'm sure we'll get an update soon. Anyway, that's rotated, we'll move on. All right, I don't like the placement for the, um, well, pretty much everything. So you can click and drag to select a group of objects and I'm going to drag it back and it should snap in like that. Now, if you don't deselect before you try and select something else, you'll move it. So control Z to undo will be your best friend here. but. With all these selected, I don't have to grab on over there. I can just click anywhere. Another way of rotating, might just come back to that. Another way of rotating, if you scroll down to edit transform, you can apply a rotation. This isn't like what it's actual rotation is, but you can use it to apply a rotation. So if I type in 90 and hit enter, it'll rotate at 90 degrees clockwise, and then to bring it back, we'll just do negative 90. There we go. Okay, um, got to assign these buildings to each player. So we've still got object placement selected. I um, clicked and dragged to select all of that. You come up uh, over here, player assignment, bring it down to player one, and that should be done. Click and drag player two. So that's ready to go. Then the territory, which is what the, the marker over there is used for, turn off fog. Um, that marker there, starting territory team. If you go into Territory Editor and just click the top one, it'll divide it up based on where these points are. 
Right, so what's going to happen next um, is when you add uh, capturable points, the uh, the territories will get divided up um, to include those capturable points having their own territory. Um, probably easiest if I just show you um, object placement, uh, capture point, game resource point. Going to bring the overlay back up so I can get the center. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's my center there between those two. So left click, which isn't working. So I'm just going to click somewhere else and come back to it. Uh, right click, I'll stick it over the side here. Um, I'll add another one down the bottom, but I'll, I'll just set this one up first. So if I zoom right in, you've actually got to add the uh, the other points individually. So your, your power and requisitions got to be added uh, individually. So I've just right clicked and it's placed it straight over the top of it. So move that out of the way. Oh, hang on. So I've still got snapped grid set 16. So it's currently grayed out. Turn it on, uh, off and on again change it to 4. That'll give me a bit more fine-tuning. Get that out of the way. Okay, so if you have a look it uh, looks to be in the right place just by using this uh, snapped grid at uh, 4m meters, whatever it is. So that was a, uh, we can actually scroll down here just to double check, that is a requisition resource. So now we want a power and I need to rotate that, um, hold shift. Now instead of trying to get it um, spot on, if I just take it over to the side, then it snaps back. At least that way I know that I've still got snap on and, and it's gone into the right uh, orientation, angle, whatever. So one of each, um, same thing for a elite point, I'm going to leave that off. Now, if I scroll back out, um, we're on, yeah, we're going to need it on four. Um, if I click and drag to select that and hold down C, then I can, holding down C, then left click down to drag, and it's duplicated or copied. Now that it's there, I'll just Alt to move camera drag it down to where I want it and that snapped in the center there. Right, so we got two resource points. Go back to terrain. Nothing's happened yet. We need to calculate the whatever that is. And there you go. So it's divvied up. Um, the game needs it. Don't ask me why. Have to do it. If you try and save it without it um, It'll complain that there are errors. Okay, now we got that set up. We'll get rid of that overlay. Um, yeah, overlays. This button here. Well, once you've played around with it, you'll um, you'll get a feel for it. And generally, fog is the culprit if you can't really see anything properly. Uh, let's have a play around with the um, the textures now. Get rid of that overlay. Actually, we probably want um, playable playable area tiles. Okay, so creating a new layer. Add new layer button isn't working, so we might just select a texture, and there you go. It's working now. Um, hit assign. We've assigned a texture to the layer. Now you can just painted on pretty much.
Something that's kind of cool is that um, you can actually change the texture once it's on there just by going and assigning a different texture to the layer that's selected. That's the terrain textured. I'm uh, going to move on to doing height maps now. So just come up to the height map editor button up the top. Now I'm going to build a bit of a gauntlet into this um, and I'm going to want like a, a set height. If you just go additive it'll kind of just keep going and going. Um, so I find it's easier to do set value. Uh, let's just check that's only 10 higher than the ground so we might up to 30. Yeah okay cool and then um, I typically find it easier to do this over like with a top-down view. Something I should have mentioned earlier is that doing your heights after placing objects can be a bit problematic as you just saw that uh, that capture point got buried instead of floating up onto the top of the terrain. Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of make a mid-level, have a bit of a gate at the front and uh, wall off the sides. So to fix this, unfortunately I'm just going to have to do it manually, so I'll go back to objects and uh, instead of trying to use the transform down here, I'm just going to go with the uh, snap to height, um, set to one meter. I'll lift him up and then um, I'll just drop him down after I've put the terrain in. And there we go. I'm now going to use the impasse map editor um, just to set up some boundaries so that troops can't scale cliffs just in case they get any funny ideas. I think if I just select infantry, vehicle and drop pods, because I'm going to do these cliff edges, um, bring the brush size down, I'll just paint over these edges here. I think that uh, that should pretty much do the trick. Alright, so that's a bit rough, but good enough. I'm going to assume that skimmers can still fly over the top. And uh, like Gabriel should be able to use his ability to jump up over there. I think I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to double check that I've named uh, assigned player to all these buildings. Um, so with uh, the select objects and click drag uh, I can see player is uh, zero meaning player one um, and over this side it should be player 1001 so that's player two. So far so good. That should be world. That should be world. So once you're finished, um, just up in scenario, uh, you can under properties you can change the uh, the name. Um, I, I'm not too sure if it has to be set to community map. I've I've tried both eastern front and community map, and they both uh, appear to work. Um, and I've tried to play around with camera properties, but I'm just struggling with that um, bug that doesn't let you edit and re-export. Um, so maybe I'll give that a go now. Set it to 80, see if we can get some more camera height. Hopefully. Um, okay, and uh, right, save. And export package. So, in theory, I should be able to launch Dawn of War 3 and it should be there. Well, that's all for now. Um, I hope uh, this has helped out a little bit. I know it's not much in the way of a comprehensive tutorial and guide, uh, you know, as I'm still figuring it out myself. But if, uh, if I've helped you uh, make a few less mistakes along the way, then uh, I suppose it's served its purpose. Uh, hopefully we get that uh, bug sorted out and um, can really get into making some awesome maps. 
best of luck with it and thanks for watching.